Hey everyone, it's Zach Beck. According to the Federal Reserve, nearly 50% of Americans are not participating in the stock market right now. And on top of that, three out of five millennials have no exposure to investing in the stock market. Now, most experts recommend that before you begin investing, you should have three to six months of your living expenses set aside. And on top of that, you should be debt free with the exception of a mortgage. Now, if you're considering investing or if you've already begun investing, you might be wondering what the best approach to take is. Should you use a tax deferred account such as a 401k? Should you consider a post-tax account such as a Roth IRA? Or should you consider using a taxable brokerage account where you just simply invest right into the stock market? So what I want to do in this video is break down in detail the differences between all of these approaches and how the taxes on those different accounts could truly affect your bottom line at the end of the day. So let's take our time, dive into the details, and jump into it right now. As previously mentioned, there are various approaches that you can take when it comes to investing, but I believe the most important thing you need to understand before you actually begin investing is understand why you're investing. You have a couple of questions that you'll want to ask yourself. And the first is, do you have any debts that you need to pay off? Now, like I said before, it's preferable for you to be debt free before you begin investing. But if you do have some outstanding balances, you just want to make sure that you have a plan in place to get that wiped out before you put money into the market. And that is because if you try investing while having a heavy load or heavy burden of debt, it's almost the equivalent of trying to run up an escalator that is going down. You can only make so much progress because you have a negative net worth when you're having debt and you have a positive net worth when you have no debt. So just think about that from your standpoint. And if you're looking for an approach to take, I would recommend the debt snowball method. Now this is from Dave Ramsey. He actually offers that through Financial Peace University. I'll put a link in the description if you want to try that out. But basically what that is, is you will take all the debts that you have, list them from the most expensive to the least expensive and start by wiping out your least expensive debt first, then go up to your next, next expensive debt and just keep going all the way up until you knock out the highest balance possible. Once you have all that knocked out, then you're starting at a good position to be able to put money into the market and hopefully that money you've been setting aside towards your debt can now go towards your investments. So if you have a longer term horizon that you want to accumulate and build wealth, you might want to initially look at your employer sponsored plan. And this would be something along the lines of a 401k. And what a 401k is, is basically a retirement account that is pre-tax, meaning that your money is taken directly out of your paycheck and then put into this 401k account. And I believe it's important for you to understand that the 401k is not the investment, it is simply the investment account. And then you use that account to basically shelter your investments so that you can put your money to work in the stock market. Market, you could almost think of a 401k like a shoe. So what you have here is the shoe is good on its own, but you actually need to be able to put something into it like a sock to be able to actually work. If you think about it from this standpoint, the 401k on its own is basically a shoe, but if you don't put anything in the shoe, either a sock or a foot, it's not going to do anything. Your 401k on its own is not going to do anything unless you actually put money into your account. And then when you put money in there, you want to dedicate it into specifically the stock market, preferably into a group of index funds. So that's just one thing you want to be aware of. The 401k is the account, it is not the investment. But then what happens when you actually use a 401k is that you're not going to be taxed on the initial money that you put in. You will be taxed when you take the money out after the age of 59 and a half. Now, currently you are limited to be able to only put up to $19,500 a year into a traditional 401k. Now, oftentimes employers will match dollar for dollar how much money you put into your account, usually up to that maximum threshold. So if you have the option of doing so with your employer, this is a very effective tool that you can utilize. Now, one thing you want to bear in mind is that when you're going into a traditional 401k, this isn't money that you should be expecting to use anytime in the near term. This is something you're looking to actually retire with. And that's because if you withdraw the money before the age of 59 and a half, you're going to be hit with a penalty. And then on top of that, you will pay the taxes, which pretty much wipes out all of the gains that you've put in the stock market. So that's something you just want to be aware of. But when you look at a pre-tax retirement account, such as a 401k, that is a good starting point. And you might want to make sure that you're at least maximizing up to 15% of your investment strategy into a retirement account so a long-term horizon is set aside properly for you. 
Even though this is a great alternative that many people have the option to participate in, most people do not do that because they're not thinking about their retirement earlier on in their careers. And this can be something that trips you up as well. So my encouragement to you is even if you're using a 401k or some other method to be able to begin investing, you want to at least get started at an earlier age so that we benefit from compound interest. Because right now, the average holdings in a 401k is relatively low when you look at the majority of people who are actually putting money in there. And then you consider most people aren't even participating in them. And once again, if your employer is offering that match, that is free money that you're leaving on the table. So you want to try and get that when you can. Now, if you're in a situation where you've already gone through the process and you are maximizing your 401k, you might have money left over after the fact that you're considering if you should invest. And I would say if you're looking at alternatively investing in addition to what you're doing with your 401k, you really want to consider a Roth IRA. Now, a Roth IRA is just like a 401k. The only difference is it as it is post-tax, meaning that your money is not automatically deducted out of your paycheck and put into a Roth IRA. It is after you get paid, then you actually can take the money and invest it into this particular account. And just like I said previously, the Roth IRA is the account. It's something that's gonna hold the resources that you put into it, and then you can invest into the stock market, but it is not the investment itself. This is something that people get confused with. Once again, they think I put money into a Roth IRA or I put money into a 401k. It doesn't do you any good unless you actually have the money going in and then going into the stock market for an investment. So with a Roth IRA, you are limited to invest up to $6,000 per year if you meet certain income guidelines, you have to be able to make no more than $193,000 for joint income filers or any more than $125,000 for a single filer. So if you're in that income threshold, then you're allowed to put $6,000 a year into this account and then you'll pay taxes on it when you withdraw it after the age of 59 and a half. Now, one of the benefits of a Roth IRA is because it is a post-tax account, meaning you've already paid taxes on the income that you've received from it, then the only thing you're going to be taxed on are the gains long term. So from that standpoint alone, if you actually needed to withdraw money you've put into your Roth IRA initially, you can do so. So with a Roth IRA, there are many benefits associated with it. And a lot of people who have options to be able to participate in a 401k will also have the option to participate in a Roth IRA. So it's something you want to consider because it can help you set more money aside. Now, if you've gone this far and you actually have the option of doing the pre-tax with a 401k and the post-tax with a Roth IRA, but let's say that you want to take it one step further, you might be wondering, where do you go from here? That's what we're going to talk about right now. Now you might be asking yourself, well, since I'm limited on investing into these different accounts, should I just use a taxable brokerage account? There is some validity to that argument, but what I would look at is you want to have a good variety when it comes to your investment strategy, not just from the actual investments themselves, such as utilizing index funds in the stock markets, so that way you're diversified. But if you diversify the actual accounts that you use to invest, that helps to build a hedge against different problems that could arise, whether you're looking at inflation, different tax guidelines, or potentially you wanted to invest more money. So if you already have a 401k open that is pre-tax, that is a good thing. And if you maximize that and then you employer contribution to that, you're doing really well to start. Then if you take money and go into a Roth IRA, you maximize that up to $6,000 a year, you're sitting in a very good situation because that is going to be post-tax, meaning the gains on that are not going to be taxed at the end of the day, so you're going to have a lot of money at the end of the day in that particular account. Now, it's very good to also look at a taxable brokerage account. Now, a taxable brokerage account works in the following manner. You will have paid income tax on money that comes into your paycheck, and then you put money into your uh, brokerage account. So then when you actually take money out at any time, it's not income restricted, it is not age restricted, you will just pay taxes on the gains that you've accumulated. And depending upon how long you've held those gains, you could potentially spend, you could potentially have short-term capital gains taxes or long-term capital gains taxes. And right now, long-term capital gains taxes are less than short-term capital gains. And that is because the government wants to incentivize people to put money in the market for a longer period of time. Now, currently President Biden is proposing actually maybe raising capital gains taxes taxes for the long term, but that hasn't gone into effect yet, and it's highly unlikely that it will given the current makeup of the Senate. So that's just something for you to be aware of. But one of the nice things about using a taxable brokerage account 
is that you have really no restrictions on what you can do. You can put a ton of money into there. You can you don't have to be limited by the age when you can take the money out. And then you can still invest into the same group of index funds or any situation that you wanna go into. But the main thing you're gonna to wanna to look at is maybe what is at the bottom line going to be able to save you more money or gain you more money depending upon which account you use. So what right now I wanna do is kind of break down a scenario and look at the difference between the same amount of money invested into a brokerage account versus the same amount of money invested into a Roth IRA and what the difference is at the bottom line so that way you can determine what's best for you. All right, so let's take a look at the difference between a Roth IRA versus a brokerage account and let's look at two different individuals who are doing this. Let's call them Paul and Peter. Paul starts by investing into a brokerage account and he maximizes his contribution, puts in $500 a month, and he does it into an S&P 500 index. And he does this over the course of 40 years. And if he were to do so, he would have income taxes on the dividends at 25%. And then he would also pay capital gains taxes on the growth, which would be 15%. This would leave him with a final after-tax value of $3,081,588. So that is a significant sum, but as you can see, it took him a long time to build up that nest egg, but he did that by investing $500 a month, which is the maximum amount that you can do right now into a Roth IRA. Now let's look at the situation with Peter. Let's say Peter goes through the same investing strategies for 40 years and he puts $500 a month into a Roth IRA. And now Peter has a different approach because his income taxes on his dividends are at 0% and his capital gains taxes on the growth are also at 0%. Therefore, at the final tax after tax value for Peter is $3,679,229. So that's almost a $500,000 difference between Paul and Peter when it comes to the end of the day of how much growth they had. Now, one thing you're gonna notice is that with a Roth IRA, you can only take that money out after the age of 59 and a half without paying any penalty on that. In addition to that, when you saw Paul, when he had his brokerage account, he could have touched that money at any time. But if you're looking for a long-term investing horizon, it shows that both are very good. And if you're only doing $500 a month, that is a substantial amount of money that you're gonna be able to accumulate over time due to the benefits of compound interest. And also if you're just simply going to an S&P 500 index fund that has a general track record of going anywhere between eight to 10% on an annual basis when you adjust it for inflation and you have your dividends reinvested, that puts you in a very enviable position when you're ready to retire at the end of the day. But also you could see it took him 40 years to accumulate about $3 million. So as you start scaling back, if you go to 30 years or 20 years, you're looking at a situation where you're still going to be a millionaire at a very early age in your life. So from that standpoint alone, the importance is actually getting started with investing and not getting too caught up in the debate between what type of account to use. Now, like I said before, personally for myself, what I like to do is I like to have a variety of accounts. I utilize a pre-tax account, then I maximize that completely. I have my post-tax Roth IRA, which I maximize out, and then all my other investments go into a brokerage account. So the majority of my investments actually are in the brokerage account because that's where I place the majority of my money after I've maximized my contributions. Now, I'm in a fortunate position because I do have a good income from my current position, but depending upon where you're at, you at least want to have a good variety so that way if you're expecting to pay more taxes at the end of the day when you retire that's one of the benefits of having a Roth IRA if you're looking at right now you want to have a better approach towards being able to maximize your contribution and have your employer match that's where a 401k comes in handy and then if you're looking to try and do a better savings rate of investing even more money that's where a traditional brokerage account comes in handy so as you can see there are a lot of great options that exist out there but the important thing at the end of the day is that you actually put your money to work and make sure Sure, like always, when you're looking at these different approaches that you're actually investing into the stock market. You don't just wanna have a Roth IRA or a 401k open and leave them open and put money in there and not have that money go to work because it won't grow over time. As a matter of fact, because of inflation, it'll probably lose value over time. So these are very important things that you wanna get right and get it situated properly. And hopefully you're doing all of this after either you become debt free or you're on the path to become debt free. And in addition to that, you already have an emergency fund set aside. So you're okay okay no matter what challenges come your way and then you're on the pathway toward success. With all that being said, I'd like to thank you for watching the video today. If you wouldn't mind, please tap the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Help push this video to other people who might need to hear it. Furthermore, on top of that, if you wouldn't mind, please comment down below. I'd love to interact with you, get to know you, do any research on your behalf so you can make well and wise informed decisions moving forward. 
Furthermore, if you wouldn't mind, please subscribe to the channel. That would mean a lot to myself personally, as I do everything I can to create positive content that makes a positive impact in your life by encouraging you and myself to lead lives of meaning and purpose, all while maintaining balance and moderation. And if you do subscribe to the channel, please tap the notification bell. That will notify you every time I post a video, which I do on a weekly basis. Once again, I'd like to thank you for watching the video today. I hope you have a wonderful May your day. Talk to you next time. Whoopshoo.